Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. In the last couple of episodes, I talked about how to add rooms and how to create area plans in your project. We're going to take these floor plans and make them more presentable, more meaningful while using colorful schemes. So today, this episode is going to be all about colorful schemes, how we can add colorful schemes to room plans and also to area plans. I'm also going to show you a trick at the end of this video about how to compute areas of a floor finishes of your rooms without actually modeling them. How do you create a floor plan that shows floor finishes where you have not modeled floor finishes in 3D? So let's begin. In episode 81, we talked about rooms, how to add rooms, how to create a floor plan with different rooms in them. If you haven't watched that video out, I'm going to give you the link in the description box. Once you have added rooms in your floor plan, let's take this floor plan, go to its properties and choose the color scheme parameter and edit that one. Now let's go to the categories and choose rooms. I'm going to take this first colorful scheme, which is already there by default called name. What this colorful scheme does is add different colors based on the name of your rooms. And I'm going to say okay to this. Here you can see that we have two rooms with the same name, bedroom. And they both have been assigned the same color. Same thing happened here where we have two rooms with same name and they have been assigned the same color. So what this colorful scheme is doing is adding some meaning to your floor plan. So these are the different types of rooms planned in your project. Now I'll go under annotate and go to color fill legend and add a legend around here. So this legend really describes which color is assigned to which room. If you remove or add any rooms, this legend is automatically going to update. Let's try that out. I'll go under architecture, go under room and add a room over here. I'm going to choose my upper limit as first floor zero. So this particular room is going from ground floor to first floor. And I'm going to add this room and call this store. If I look at my legend, you will see a storeroom with this particular color has already been automatically added. If you don't like a particular color or if you want a different type of pattern, you can select your legend and go to edit scheme to open up your edit color scheme dialog box. The alternate way of doing this is to go to the floor plans property, go to color scheme and edit from here. You can always come here and say, okay, I don't like this particular color. Instead, I want something which is yellow, a little darker yellow. And instead of a solid fill pattern, I want a different pattern, maybe uh, this kind of uh, diagonal dash pattern. I'm going to say OK. So now these two rooms have been assigned that particular hatch with that particular color. So you can always go ahead and edit this and customize based on your preferences. Now you can do a similar thing for your area plans. In the last episode, we learned about how to create area plans and compute cross building areas. I'm going to give you the link of that video also in the description box. Once you have created your area plans, we can add a color scheme to them. Let's go to the properties of the floor plan and go to color scheme and add an area plan colorful scheme. So I'm going to choose the category as area gross building. And by default, you have a area colorful scheme, which is gross building area, which is currently using the area name as your colorful scheme. You can always go ahead and change this into a different type of parameter. Let's try that out. Instead of using area names, I want to use areas, square meters of my area using the color schemes. Now here, different square meters of areas are given different colors. Now this really doesn't have a lot of meaning. And instead of each different value of square meters, let's try by range property. So this means all the areas which are less than 20 square meters are going to have this particular light pink color and all the areas which are 20 square meters and above are going to be used for this particular color i'm going to make this color a little bit darker so we can see the difference clearly and i'm going to say okay to this now here you see the staircase is light pink whereas terraces and first floor area are being darker color you can always go ahead and change and edit this particular range if you like so let's go ahead color scheme and change this to be 30 square meters so everything below 30 has one color everything above 30 has another color you can always choose a different color or different pattern as per your preference i'm going to just leave it as it is and also you can add more ranges if you have a larger floor plan with more ranges to be uh, shown and i'm going to say okay to this so now you can see that everything above 30 square meters is assigned this color 
and everything less than 30 square meters is assigned this color so if you're working with a larger floor plan areas with a kind of a master planning for a larger project you can really visibly see that okay these are the large spaces which needs to be considered or which are the small areas which needs to have a different kind of uh, parameters so these colorful schemes can really be used to add a lot of meaning to your uh, areas talking about adding meaning to your floor plans i have a small trick for you here let's go back to our ground floor plan where we added rooms and the colorful scheme based on the name of the rooms instead of using name of the rooms what i like to do sometimes is to use floor finish property of my room let's consider this particular room it has a couple of different properties here like base finish ceiling finish wall finish floor finish these properties to use as my colorful scheme and compute the total areas of each of my floor finish without actually modeling a floor finish in 3d so let's see how that really works so i'm going to take my one of my rooms and add a floor finish let's say tiles okay and let's go ahead on the toilets and take both of these toilets and add a floor finish called toilet tiles let's take the foyer as a floor finish of marble and let's take these two bedrooms and add a floor finish called wooden parker so now i have a couple of different uh, values in my floor finish property so let's go ahead on the color scheme and instead of using name i want a different color scheme which uses floor finish so i'm going to duplicate this color scheme and call it floor finish use the parameter of floor finish instead of name it's going to ask you if you want to make a new color scheme and i'm going to say yes so now it automatically identified the values of your floor finish property and then added different colors to it based on its own preferences if, if you want you can always customize these colors and the patterns and i'm going to say okay to this so here you can see that now we have different colors based on the different floor finishes. You can make this more interesting as well. So I go back to color scheme and say, okay, wooden park which should be having a little darker color and which looks a little bit more a color of the wood. And it should have a fill pattern, which is uh, wooden. So maybe say, okay. And now here you can see that actually it looks like if you have modeled a wooden parkway in 3d and here you have your uh, different patterns similarly you can add more patterns to your um, color rooms let's go ahead and edit the scheme let's add toilet tiles as a little darker color with a cross hatch so let's take this cross hatch and let's say okay so it literally looks like there are tiles there so this way you can add a little bit more meaning to it now the question comes what is the total area of wooden parkway we are using in this particular floor so let's go ahead and create a room schedule and let's consider rooms as our category let's take the level so we know which floor has how much uh, material let's take the name of the room let's take the finish and let's take the total area of the room and let's go to the sorting and grouping and sort everything by level and then by floor finish i'm going to add grand totals and i'm going to add a footer under floor finish so i want to know how much total square meters of area belongs to which particular floor finish and i'm going to also go to area property and add totals to them so uh, now i know that these two particular rooms have not been added any finish if you want you can add the finish from here let's go ahead and add maybe granite to my staircase and store maybe tiles over here so now if you go back to your ground floor these two rooms have already been also added into your color scheme let's go back to the room schedule and let's see how much total um, toilet tiles are we using so let's go to the toilet toilet tiles total of 14.60 square meters of the toilet tiles we're using here so we can actually get the areas of the floor finishes in these rooms without actually modeling them isn't that great I hope you enjoyed today's episode. The next one is going to be filled with a lot of Revit tips and tricks that you can use to enhance the efficiency in your Revit workflow. So please make sure to subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.